first of all i thank uh, professor dr sabu thomas uh, honorable vice chancellor of mg university kottayam will deliver the keynote address on the theme of polymer nano composite for tissue engineering professor dr sabu thomas graciously accepted our invitation despite of his incredibly hectic schedule since he is unable to join us in this particular program he will deliver his keynote address via online platform and thank you sir on behalf of department of zoology advanced center for regenerative medicine and stem cell research in cutaneous biology and the university of kerala for share sharing your valuable findings with the participants with the participants of gan program on the role of nano nutraceuticals in tissue regeneration and thank you sir for your, for your gracious presence and uh, this pro this is our second gan program and first one actually conducted in 2026 2016 and uh, this one is actually uh, we are awarded on 2019 but uh, due to the covid pandemic we are actually changed uh, the dates and i also thank murli for your gracious presence for the and keynote lecture i would like to welcome professor dr sabu thomas vice chancellor of mahatma gandhi university kottayam on the topic of polymer nano composite scaffold for tissue engineering dr sabu thomas vice chancellor mahatma gandhi university director school of en energy material founder director international and inter university center for nano science and nano technology former director school of chemical science mahatma gandhi university kottayam He completed his Bachelor of Science in Chemistry in the year 1980 from the University of Kerala, and also took a B.Tech in Polymer Science and Rubber Technology in 1983 from the University of Cochin. He received his Ph.D. in Polymer Science and Engineering in 1987 from the Indian Institute of Technology, Kharagpur. He started his career as lecturer in the year 1987 at M.G. University, Kottayam. Later, he worked as reader at the same university. Afterward, he joined as a regional director at the School of Technology and Applied Science in Mannanam. From the year 1997 to the present, he has been working as a full professor in polymer science and engineering at the School of Chemical Science, Mahatma Gandhi University, and also he is a vice chancellor of MG University. 2009 to 11, he was a dean of technology and applied science and a syndicate member of Mahatma Gandhi University. In 2016, he has been worked as an adjunct professor at ACSIR Academy of Scientific and Innovative Research. In the same year, he was also an erudite professor at the Calcutta School of Tropical Medicine, Kolkata. Later, in 2019, he was the director of the School of Energy Material at MG University. From the 2009 to 18, Honorable Director of IIUC NN at the same university, he has been ranked 14th in the list of world best scientists that has been compiled by Stanford University. Figures in the list as the second best scientist in India in the field of polymer science, ranked first in the Kerala state, 19th in the country, and 236 in the Asia. 2016. 11 in the world by the German based European Science Evaluation Centre Bailey Medal Award Kairly Lifetime Research Award 2021 by Kerala Government Foreign Fellow of the European Academy of Science 2019 Dr APJ Abdul Kalam Award for Scientific Excellence 2016 are some of his excellence reward and he has 1200 publications in peer reviewed journals from 1986 to 2019 and his total number of citations is more than 4434 we are so grateful to have you here sir professor dr sabu thomas joined with us through online welcome you sir thank you so much many many thanks for the kind uh, introduction and many thanks to uh, professor sigit Professor Siji, you are doing a wonderful work. This is your second GAN uh, international conference. So, congratulations, Siji, uh, in running a beautiful meeting. I am very pleased to be associated with you today. So, with all your permission, probably I will start my uh, showing my slide. Dear friends, you know I am going to talk about uh, how polymer nano composites could be utilized for uh, functional. biomedical applications and we are quite active in the area of uh, biomaterials we have a very big group uh, in the nano science and nano technology working on biomaterials we use variety of uh, polymeric materials biocompatible polymeric materials and we introduce nano structures into 
polymeric materials and we manufacture variety of uh, functional biomaterials. In some of the cases, we also introduce nutraceuticals. For example, curcumin. You use as a, uh, I mean, nutraceutical. You can see we are we are also uh, in cooperation with a curcumin company, and we also edited a book on curcumin. Curcumin is also one of our active field. But I will focus more on uh, uh, polymer nanocomposites for tissue engineering. Since this conference is basically for uh, nutraceutical, let me show you one slide. The nutraceutical market in the world, uh, billion dollar business. You know, U US is a topper as we expected. Europe, Japan, and India. China, I did not get a figure. China is also very strong, even more than United States. China is doing very big business on uh, nutraceuticals. I have a few companies, uh, you know, in cooperation with me on uh, uh, nutraceuticals. Uh, let me show you another important slide. Uh, this slide indicate the uh, uh, the 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 use of nutraceuticals different uh, different diseases. Look at cancer, uh, diabetes, hypertension, variety of uh, diseases. Uh, these nutraceuticals have a very big say. Just to give you some understanding. Um, similarly, similarly, if you look at uh, Srijit, are you able to see my slide? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can we can see your slide. Yeah, perfect. And let me show you the next slide. Yes. Uh, if you look at the uh, the the nutraceuticals action, many diseases are associated with reactive oxygen species: joint pains, heart attacks, skin, eye, gastrointestinal issues, your teeth problems. Uh, multi-organ failure, uh, brain diseases, lung diseases, were all reactive oxygen species have a very big role. We all know that. And you see how uh, a nutraceutical, so you look at this is the action of legumes on free radical scavenging. Uh, this is a very interesting slide. There's a very nice review written by uh, an Indian professor on the action of nutraceuticals on controlling the uh, different types of diseases. I have another slide. You see, look at the spices we use. Uh, we have a huge activity on turmeric. Look at the spices. Spices have a lot of beneficial activities. Uh, Anti-diabetic, antioxidant activity, anti-inflammatory, anti-mutogenic, uh, digestive stimulants, suppressing cellular uh, signal pathways. So. Spices have a wonderful effect. And I have a table here. Look at the action of curcumin, uh, different types of garlics, fenugreek, uh, onion, cumin. They all have lots of beneficial health effects. So I can I, I congratulate Swedish and organizing such a beautiful meeting because our country is rich in nutraceuticals. Now, dear colleagues, friends, what we do in my laboratory is we manufacture different types of scaffold. Some of the scaffolds we introduce nutraceutical components. And you all know that scaffolds provide a platform for cell function, adhesion, trans transplantation process. Scaffold functions as a template. And after a while, the scaffold have, ha so scaffolds have to disappear, allow cell attachment. So scaffolds have wonderful actions. And what are the requirements of the scaffold? A good biocompatibility, large porosity, biodegradability, mechanical properties. So scaffolds have to meet several requirements. And I have shown uh, the picture of a few different types of scaffolding material. They are all essentially porous material, many scaffolds. And why they are porous? What is the requirement of porosity? Porosity is very important for cell attachment, particularly macropores. Cell proliferation, macropores are very important. Cell differentiation, macropores are very important. But dear friends, we need also uh, nanopores for what? Pathways for biofluids and waste. And the tissue regeneration, we need macropores. So we need macro and nanoscale pores. Then you might ask, many of our structures, we use electrospun system. Electrospun system 
give rise to fibrous structure. Fibrous structures have a lot of advantages, high porosity, variable pore size. You can have orientation in fibrous structure. So how do you make this fibrase, nanofibrase? You can produce by different ways, drawing process, template synthesis process, phase operation process, self-assembly process, electrospinning process. We make a fibrase particularly by electrospinning process. If you look at electrospinning, it's a very simple process. You make a solution. And in the solution, you can introduce all the bioactive agents, nanoparticles, nutraceuticals, and then you can go for an electrospinning process. It's a horizontal way or vertical way you can electrospin the system. And you can have a shell and core. Different configurations could be possible in electrospinning process. And polymer nanocomposite, when you put nanoparticles into polymers and when you do electrospinning, you can make beautiful polymer nanocomposite. You can also introduce uh, nutraceuticals during the manufacturing process. And nanocomposites provide lots of uh, beneficial effect, uh, good mechanical strength, uh, cell proliferation, cell attachment, uh, faster degradation process, provide lots of advantages. So what are the nanostructures we use in my laboratory? We use nanotubes, graphitic platelets, nanotalc, synthetic and natural clays, and cellulose fibers. Look at cellulose, we are very active. You can see we have a, we have a very nice book on cellulose in cooperation with my colleague uh, in the uh, United Kingdom. So we work quite a lot on nanocellulose, different types of metal oxides. How do you make them? We make solutions of uh, polymer, and the nanostructures, sometimes bioactive agents, nutraceuticals. Then we go for electrospinning process. You can see the electrospinning setup in my laboratory. And when you do electrospinning process, you can control several parameters the polymer concentration, the amount of bioactive compounds, the nanoparticle contents, the applied voltage. You can control the moisture. Several aspects will be controlled. I don't want to go much into electrospinning. Now I'm going to show you some examples. Look at the look at the electrospinning of uh, PCL. PCL is a very important polymer. Polycarbonate. We work out a lot on PCL. Look at this is PCL. This is PCL with one percent of carbon nanofibers. See, this is PCL. This is PCL with one percent of carbon nanofibers. We could get more finer fibers when you use 1% of carbon nanofiber. Let me show you another important uh, nanocomposite. We work on polyurethane a lot, but this is a work reported by a good friend of mine, Professor Coates. He worked quite a lot on polyurethane, thermoplastic polyurethane. When you mix thermoplastic polyurethane with the graphite, you see this is unexfoliated. Graphite is not exfoliated. And if you look at the uh, figure number B, this is uh, uh, thermally expanded graphene oxide processed by melt mixing. Look at this. Relatively good dispersion of graphene oxide. And if you look at C and D, C and D are produced by, this is by solution mixing, and this is by in-situ polymerization process. So you find that solution mixing and in-situ polymerization gave rise to Excellent dispersion of graphene oxide in polyurethane. This slide this is an AFM picture, AM to AFM picture of polystyrene. Polystyrene clay, you can see these are the clay particles. This atomic force microscopy of polystyrene clay. This is without clay and this is with clay. You can see the, the nanostructured clay. Clay has lots of beneficial effects. It's a natural material, there's a lot of beneficial effects in the own healing and tissue engineering. Let me also say something about humidity. Dear friends, colleagues, students, when you do electrospinning, you all, you all have to control one important parameter, that is the humidity of the electrospinning chamber. Look at this. This is actually uh, electrospinning of a polymer with less than 25% of humidity in the electrospinning chamber. You don't see any hole on the, on the fiber, on the nanofiber. But when you increase the moisture content in the uh, in the electrospun chamber 
you will see large number of holes on the spun fiber. What's the mechanism of this? The basically because of phase separation and breathing. You know, when you do the electrospinning process, the solvent evaporates from the fiber. Therefore, cooling, the surface gets cooled. Then what happens when the surface gets cooled, the water vapor in the, in the electrospun chamber undergo condensation process. They condense on the, fi on, the fi on the fiber surface and make an impingement. That is why you have lots of holes. So you can make quite nano, nano pores on the surface of um, electrospun system, uh, controlling the uh, moisture. You can see beautiful air from picture. Pores on the, on the nano fiber. You can also make uh, dual porous. It's a very nice work of uh, my good friend from uh, Korea. He has made dual porous scaffold for tissue engineering. You can see both macro and nano porous. You know what he did? He introduced the uh, uh, ammonium uh, perchlorate and, uh, and sodium chloride, ammonium bicarbonate and sodium chloride, put, and then they are etched out by solvent. So you can make beautiful uh, dual porous structures. Now I wanted to show you another interesting slide of Professor Kao. Professor Kao made use of PLLA. This is PLLA scaffold, and the contact angle of PLLA scaffold is uh, pretty high. PLLA is hydrophobic. But if you mix with hydroxyapatite or collagen, or PLLA collagen hydroxyapatite, you see the, uh, the hydrophobicity could be reduced. The system become more hydrophilic. So this is also quite interesting. Tissue engineering application, we need more of hydrophilicity. Let me show you another important property. When you use any polymers for tissue engineering application, the system should have good mechanical strength. I will show you one slide. This is a pure PCL. The pure PCL is a black one. Look at this, a black one. Into PCL, PCL doesn't have very good uh, strength and modulus. If you just put, if you just put 0.5% of multi-wall carbon nanotube. Look at the blue one. The modulus increases, the strength increases. Therefore, dear colleagues, by adding small amount of nanostructures can increase the mechanics because the scaffolds have to be robust. But don't ask too much. If you have too much of nanomaterials, the mechanical properties decrease. In vitro degradation. You see, one when you put a scaffold in your body, after the tissue regeneration, the scaffolds have to disintegrate. Scaffolds have to degrade. Scaffolds have to disappear. So nanoparticles are very important effect. Look at this is the pure PCL. Pure PCL scaffold as a function of time. After eight weeks, the disappearance is very low. But if you put carbon nanotube, you see, the scaffold disappear much faster. Therefore, introduction of nanostructures will help the degradation of the scaffolding material. The in vitro degradation of the scaffold could be faster. Now, let me show you. We do a lot of work with animals. These are all guinea pigs. We made a, we made sacrificial wound on the guinea pigs, and then we close the wound with electrospun PCL with nanostructures and bioactive compounds. Bioactive compounds also we use, nutraceutical compounds also we use. And you can see after a while, you can see the, the, the wound we have made and the wound is closed by the, uh, by the, uh, by the tape we made by uh, electrospinning. You see after, after two, three weeks, the wound is completely healed and no scar. So dear friends, we work in this area quite a lot using nutraceutical stew and you can see cell migration cell proliferation angiogenesis is quite high when you use this this is actually the picture of our uh, electrospun system and we also introduce nanoparticles see, this is nanoparticles of a zinc oxide very small amount of zinc oxide less than one percent the size is 50 to 60 nanometer size Zinc oxide has a good beneficial effect. But colleagues, if you add more and more zinc oxide, then the cells undergo death. The cells will die. Therefore, the amount of zinc oxide and the size of zinc oxide nanoparticles, they are very critical. 
you can see the you can see the uh, the the this is our uh, PCL and this is zinc oxide. You can see cell proliferation, cell migration, own healing and angiogenesis taking place. And when you put a little bit of zinc oxide, that gives rise to hydrogen peroxide. Therefore, the the uh, the wound healing is quite efficient. And you can see the the comparison of neat PCL and the PCL with the one percent of zinc oxide. One percent of zinc oxide is much better in terms of uh, uh, angiogenesis, fibroblast formation. Look at the histology. Another important point I want to tell you: I already spoke. When you put a little bit of nanoparticles. The disappearance of the in vitro degradation of the of the uh, scaffold becomes faster. You can see this is neat PCL, fifth day, tenth day, and twentieth day. This is PCL with one percent of zinc oxide. Look at the degradation of the scaffold becomes much faster when you have zinc oxide. And my PhD student did did a quantified wound healing process. You can see this is PCL, neat PCL uh, with uh, uh, this is a neat PCL wound healing activity with uh, guinea pigs. Neat PCL. You see, you have 30 days. You have the wound healing process, but the the, the hair growth you cannot see here. And the uh, second one is the PCL with the zinc oxide. You see, PCL with the zinc oxide. After 30 days, you have a beautiful healing, and you can see hair growth. This is a negative control. This is a positive control. This is a negative control. You see, the PCL with the 1% of zinc oxide is the most efficient system. So we are working with the companies to scale up. We are also working into different types of system. PLGA, this is PLGA. PLGA is nothing but polylactic acid, glycolic acid, 85 to 15. Uh, this is actually a microscopic images. Day 0, day 80, day 88, day 108. You will find that the copolymer of 50 is to 50, more of glycolic acid, the, the scaffold get disappeared much faster. Look at this. After one or ten days, you don't see any fiber here. If you look at 85 is to 15, less amount of glycolic acid, you still see the fiber. So when you make copolymers, you can control the, the extent of degradation by controlling the composition. So dear friends, now what we do is, we look at a natural or synthetic polymer, which is biocompatible. We mix with nanomaterials. It could be nanocellulose, it could be uh, graphite, or it could be metal oxide. We also introduce therapeutic agents. It could be a nutraceutical component. And then we make electrospun scaffold for uh, tissue engineering. And a variety of, variety of bioactive compounds, olive oil, variety of chitosan, variety of bioactive compounds are very effective in wound healing applications. These are all different types of bioactive compounds, curcumin, chitosan, honey. They're all very, very important. Let me show you another interesting work did my, by my coworker. When she was in France, we had a very strong Indo-French program. And she's right now in Australia uh, as a scientist. So what we did is uh, my PhD student took gelatin, hyaluronic acid. And then we took for gas aid. So we mixed gelatin and hyaluronic acid mix them together in ice bath and then we introduced uh, a, a, a fujasate it is a very nice natural uh, filler and then we made porous scaffold by lyophilization process so my phd student made beautiful porous material and you can see the porosity of the material is quite high porosity very high porosity we made this is uh, without any with uh, the, the first picture is um, uh, without fujasite, 0% fujasite, this is 2.4% of fujasite. And you can see the porosity is very close to 90%. And we also made surface, we also looked at surface properties. We are able to control the contact angle very efficiently. And we looked at the cell viability of these scaffolding material. And we could get the cell viability of very close to 92%, certain combinations. Dear friends, we are also active into nanocellulose, nano kite, and nano starch. This we extract from the biological waste. We follow the uh, the work of Alan Dufresne from Grenoble. Let me show you one important slide. My PhD student made nano crystals from uh, banana stem. 
we collected the banana stem, then we, we went, went for a processing and we made beautiful nanocrystals. And then we introduced nanocrystals into a biopolymer. Look at this is a neat biopolymer. And we introduced uh, five to six percent of, uh, I mean, this uh, uh, nanocellulose or nanochitin or nano. You, you see, the the mechanical strength goes up remarkably. This is with the f uh, six percent of nanocellulose. This is the uh, neat uh, polymer. Neat polymer is extensively rubbery, but when you put six percent of uh, nanocellulose, the rubber is transformed into a high modulus material. You can see this is a neat rubber. You cannot use it for beyond uh, 350 k. But when you put, uh, uh, but when you put these uh, biological viscous, this is actually, I mean, nanocellulose from a Tunisian animal. Look at this. The uh, utility of the material you can use up to uh, close to 500, uh, 500 k. Let me show another interesting work. We have been working with, uh, working with uh, Brazil. For many years, my Brazilian collaborator is very active in making, uh, I mean, polyurethane, medical grade polyurethane. And if you look at the uh, mechanical properties of medical grade polyurethane is 17.5, modulus is 37.5. And what we did is we introduced 5% of nanocellulose made from pineapple leaf. You look at the you modulus become 992.4, 37.5 became 992.4, a quantum jump. And eventually, you know, dear colleagues, what we did. My Brazilian collaborator and I, we did, we made nanocellulose polyurethane prosthetic heart wall in Brazilian hospital. And we published a large number of papers and my collaborator has a very interesting patent. We can also utilize uh, nanocellulose gel as a, as a scaffold for burns. You can see a gentleman suffering from high degree of burns on his face. And his face is completely covered with nanocellulose gel. Nanocellulose gel is extremely porous. Therefore, the tissue regeneration is quite rapid. So we use it. We use uh, this sort of platform for a large number of applications. Look at the work of Sebastian Moritz from Spain. Sebastian Moritz made a beautiful nanocellulose aerogel. Nanocellulose and water, you go for a freeze drying process. And he introduced the antibiotic into this platform. And you can see the cumulative uh, release of antibiotic. So, dear friends, uh, nanocellulose is an excellent platform that you get, get from the plant is an excellent platform for uh, drug delivery applications. And my Chinese collaborator, Professor Lu, has done one step ahead. You know what he did? He made a combined hyperstructures of nanocellulose and collagen. He mixed them together and went for freeze drying. And you see the type of structure he has made, extremely porous. The porosity is very close to 95%. And water holding capacity of this uh, aerogel is very close to 4,000%. And Professor Lu said it's an excellent material for uh, uh, for wound dressing. It can it can absorb all the pus and water from your wound, and extremely biocompatible. Let me show you some of the work we have done with uh, curcumin. My collaborator, my my colleague and collaborator uh, from uh, from. Uh, uh, from United Kingdom and my PhD student, we did beautiful work on surgical sutures. Look at the surgical suture market in the world. Sur surgical suture market in Asia Pacific region would exhibit the highest growth rate in 2027. So there is a good demand for surgical sutures. So what we have done is uh, we have made uh, a, we, we we made use of a biocompatible polymer. Which is nothing but a copolymer of PLA and glycolic acid. We introduced the curcumin, and we we went for an extrusion process with the control conditions, and then we went for a solid state drawing process to draw the fiber so that diameter could be decreased, and we made different types of uh, combinations. You can see this is uh, PLA glycolic acid, neat PLA glycolic acid with the PO. PO will act as a blend, act as a plasticizer. PDLGA and PO plus curcumin. Look at, we have made three different combinations. And we made an extrusion process followed by solid stage, uh, I mean, uh, drawing and utilized as a, as a, as a surgical suture for uh, closing your wound. And you can see our total manufacturing process. This is the, this is a copolymer 
5 percent of PO and 10 percent of curcumin. We have compounded an extrusion process, dry drawing. Uh, finally, we have drawn. The, you can see the fiber we have made with my collaborator in the United Kingdom. We made beautiful surgical switches. And there's a big advantage for drawing process. See, this is the neat PLA fiber. Uh, we will call PDLDA. It's a, it's a copolymer of glycolic acid and uh, PLA. This is after drawing. You see the difference after drawing. Drawing time, you can orient it. This is actually uh, PDLDA and uh, PO combination before, dra before drawing, after drawing. This is the last one is PDLGA, PU, and curcumin. You can see these are the curcumin. The, the square things are curcumin. And after drawing, you see a lot of orientation taking place. Let me show you another, a, a, a very interesting slide about the mechanical properties. We have made two different types of fibers. One is 0.5 mm diameter and only one mm diameter. If you look at the ultimate strength of this material, you will find that this is, uh, this is the uh, neat uh, polymer the uh, 0.5 mm showed uh, high, higher mechanical properties and this is one mm this is with 10 percent of curcumin when you are 10 percent of curcumin you see the mechanical strength goes up so curcumin also has a reinforcing effect and this is young's modulus young's modulus also you find the same thing when you are a little bit of curcumin you see the 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 uh, the strength goes up now look at the drug release. We introduce drug into it, into this fiber structure, the suture. Because when you do uh, suturing process, we also introduce a drug. You look at the drug release as a function of time. You will find that these are all these are all compound with uh, with the curcumin. The difference is the top, the red one is the drawn material, the drawn fiber, less diameter. You see, the drug release is much faster. The drug has to be released in a faster rate. This is the extruded material. The blue one is extruded without any drawing process. Dear friends, we also looked at the looked at the uh, in vivo studies and the reactive protein latex test. If you, this is actually guinea pig, and we introduced this fiber into the uh, into the tissues of the guinea pig, and then you you if you, you examine this uh, this structure after a. Uh, after a few days, you will find that the tissues with the, uh, with the curcumin, their angiogenesis cell growth were much, much better. These two are actually cells with the curcumin. You see, this is a PDG, LJ, PUO, the polymer and PUO. This is the polymer, PU and curcumin. Curcumin gave much better cells. We also, uh, I mean, did the reactive protein test latex test you will find that this is the the first one is actually the uh, the positive control you can see there a lot of information and uh, b c d are the uh, are the uh, negative control okay and this is our sample you see our sample with the uh, po and curcumin with the biocompatible polymer showed excellent results Dear friends, we are also using uh, nutraceutical compounds for uh, uh, for uh, food packaging. We are also into food packaging. You can see this is uh, a combination of star uh, cytosan, starch, and curcumin and silver nanoparticles. We made a mixture of these, made a very nice uh, combination of these, and coated on the banana. This is the uncoated banana. You see, uncoated banana could not survive after four days. There are a lot of fungal growth. You don't see them after, uh, after four days because they're degrading. But you see, the banana coated with the suspension can survive up to five days and more. So this could be a very nice material for uh, uh, for uh, preserving our uh, food, for uh, coating on the food. Similarly, you can also make use of uh, hodine. Hodine is actually a barley product, kytosine, a combination of both. We went for electro spinning. We made beautiful structures, and then this is again a very nice material for uh, uh, for uh, coating the food and vegetables. Let me show you another interesting work. You know, during the COVID time, dear friends, we proposed the India-US pro pro program, the making manufacturing of a tri-layer mask. The outer layer is made of uh, biodegradable 
a polyester coated with an anti adhesive layer the middle layer is coated with curcumin the middle layer is made of uh, biodegradable uh, polyamide coated with the curcumin and nanocellulose and the innermost layer is made of uh, cotton when coronavirus comes in you know the outer layer has got an anti adhesive coating it can repel the coronavirus and the middle layer is made of uh, electrospun nylon coated with the curcumin and nanocellulose which is positively charged so it can kill the coronavirus if at all some virus getting into it so this is our uh, configuration we have made dear friends electrospinning scaffold give rise to lots of applications uh, for a tissue engineering scaffold and we are also working on wound healing we are also working on filtration process my my colleagues we have a big group on water purification so filtration is quite important we are working on sensors energy storage uh, tissue uh, i mean uh, drug release catalysis so electro spinning process provide lots of opportunities so my last slide to my all my friends nanotechnology is a very powerful new approach that will change our industries and our lives we have a very small window right now to bring up this technology responsibly and sustainably to learn from past mistakes and congruently look at the possibility of harmful implications as we benefit from the application so there's a huge potential for nanotechnology so i'm glad that sridhi is organizing an excellent conference utilizing the the, uh, the 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 activity of our natural materials nutraceutical compounds for tissue regeneration i would like to thank all my coworkers nidu nainani is in uh, uh, in australia and robin agassin in the united states in umass massachusetts eldo elias in uh, uh, in canada and nanda kumar is the director of the center now i am extremely thankful to professor sena rao for the generous support from the laboratory and funding from csir dbt icmr ugc drdo to us brns industrial funding from surface seed from czech republic you can see my collaborators from uh, uh, france malaysia and india this is my group in chemistry i still have a big group in chemistry our group in nano science and uh, please uh, uh, welcome you i welcome you all to our campus sometime and i'm also the editor of nano structures and nano objects of elsevier journal it's a traditional journal no no fee for publication so those who do work on nano please submit your articles to this journal and this is uh, the, the the main building of the university this is the entrance of the university this is uh, chemistry and nano science and we are organizing two important meetings international online conference on membrane assisted water purification another important conference on outcome based education we are organizing two meeting in the campus and we are also publishing quite actively you can see my index of index has gone to 127 and we have a very good number of citations and we are also active uh, in editing and writing books you can see our recent books on biopolymers biomaterials and nutraceuticals we have a book on uh, we have a book on turmeric with the royal society of chemistry Uh, which we have done with our company with whom we are collaborating so we also write and edit many books you can see our uh, books related to the field uh, biomaterials chitin chitosan uh, food science and emerging technologies chemistry and bioactive compounds of turmeric and uh, thank you so much for your patient hearing and most welcome to our campus sometime thank you yeah thank you sir for your uh, wonderful presentation can uh, five minutes we can interact with we can interact with yes, yes. sure sure sujit yeah, yeah our, uh, our guest is here dr murali and uh, he is uh, elaborately working on nanoparticles and uh, and no, nano nutraceutical the curcumin yes. and the plg sure dr murali hello dr murali yes, sir th thank you uh, for attending this meeting and then presenting uh, wonderful nano uh, fiber uh, work of your team sir and i always wanted to see you in yeah, we always want to see you in person you know i used to get lot more invitations from your team to participate in a meetings but you know due to uh, time uh, doesn't permit us to visit uh, 
India more often. And thank you for your, uh, you know, in, for coming here and presenting wonderful work. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Murli. Let us work together. I'll be very yes. pleased to collaborate with you and uh, Srijit. Yeah, thank you. Other questions from audience, like the participants, and this is a, this is an excellent opportunity we can interact with the, uh, the nanoparticle and tissue regeneration because Sari is extensively doing that wound healing, hair growth, water purification, all these area he is actually uh, uh, contributing on nanotechnology, and the students can actually utilize this opportunity. Hello, hello, sir. hello. Sir, you mentioned about an emerging market in 2027 of surgical switches. Could you please yes. elaborate on the emerging market? Yeah, yeah. You see, surgical switches have a very big market. That's why this has been taken from the internet. It's a very huge demand for surgical switches, which are biodegradable, which are cheaper. And that is why we have a project with the United Kingdom. We did very nice work. We introduced, we made use of a biocompatible polymer. You can make use of PLA or PCL or polyoxazoline. And then we introduced, uh, I mean, uh, curcumin. And then we have done a very nice mixing and extrusion and we made uh, beautiful uh, fibers. And then these fibers have been drawn in solid state. When you do the solid state drawing, we found that the mechanical properties increase. The same time, we also found that the the curcumin would be released much faster. Okay. So we made quite a lot of surgical switches in cooperation with the UK, and the results were very encouraging. Okay. And we also going to work with the company to uh, uh, to scale up this uh, this technology. Okay. Yeah, this is a very interesting field and lots of demand for uh, uh, surgical switching application. So what the tech away is that uh, we we manipulating the composition of the composite. We can do wonders. Yes. 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 Okay. Sir. Yeah. We can work together in this area. Okay. Sir. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, sir. You are busy right now for uh, different uh, thing, and uh, thank you for your uh, support and your excellent presentation. And uh, we will uh, collab. We, we are very happy to collaborate with you, uh, like in the area of. Hair regeneration and uh, skin. Yeah, regeneration. yeah, yeah. Visit us sometime. We'll be sweet. You can come and yeah. come and we can work together. Very good. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Sweetie. And thank uh, you. Sarah, we will send you a memento for your uh, office address. Perfect. Thank Please. you. Thank you, sir. Thank Very you. pleased, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir.